Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. So OpenAI O3 Mini just dropped. I want to explain kind of what this model means, how to use it, and some fun practical applications for it. So first, it's important to understand this is a reasoning model. So it differs from chat models in the sense that it's a different scaling paradigm. So chat models are trained with next token prediction. Reasoning models are post-trained with reinforcement learning on chain of thought. I have a pretty extensive video on this talking about how they trained R1 from DeepSeek, if you want to dig in there more. But the point is there's a different scaling paradigm at play, different reasoning type. So chat models use system one, fast intuitive thinking, reasoning models system two, slow and effortful. There's different ways to work with them. Chat models, you tell it how to think oftentimes. Reasoning models tell it what you want. Different interaction modes. Chat models are often chat and interactive. Reasoning models, better for research and planning. I'll talk about that shortly. So this is interesting because the O series models have been on this very impressive curve of performance. This is showing ARC AGI challenge results. Now, O3 first dropped back in December. We kind of got hints of the results, at least in December. And we can see it, O3 is extremely strong, depending on the degree of cost low versus high used per task relative to in red O series and then O1 mini being down in green. Okay. So it's clear that this being a North Star towards AGI challenge, the O series models show extremely strong performance particularly the O3, sees a big jump over O1. Now, this is O3 mini, which many people report are kind of on the order of O1. So you're not getting what you see here in terms of O3 low and high, but those are certainly coming. And what you are getting is much cheaper and faster. So the prior issues with O1 is that it was pretty slow. And probably a good mental model here is if you already were thinking about using a reasoning model, but you were kind of blocked or concerned about latency or cost, this might help alleviate some of those concerns. Now, this is some other results I see on, on Reddit kind of saying it really seems to be on par with O1, but indeed better access, cheaper, faster. How to access from LangChain OpenAI and just set your model would be O3 mini. Now, I do want to call out a really nice post that uh, was on latent space, talk about the anatomy of O1 prompts. Again, I think this is quite important to emphasize here. You prompt these differently than you do with chat models. Tell it explicitly what you want, give it return format, and give it as much context as possible. Don't tell it how to think, just tell it what you want. Now I talked about use cases or reasoning models previously and those same use cases apply here. Coding, an excellent use case for these models. This model reports extremely strong performance with coding. Planning and agents, and I'll show you a fun example of that shortly. Reflection over kind of large context, for example, lots of meeting notes, lots of documents, anything you want to kind of analysis over lots of different pieces of content, this could be very strong for. It could be very strong for evaluation, for example, challenging LLM as judge use cases. It could be a very strong cognitive layer over news feeds, like over Reddit, over Twitter, if you want to synthesize information. AI News from Swix apparently uses an O-series model, I believe he said O1 Mini. He's probably going to switch that to use O3 soon. And I want to showcase deep research. So this is a little repo. I've, I've had this project for a little bit. And it kind of mimics what you get with Gemini Deep Research, but it's open source. And you can plug in any models you want for the planning phase and for the writing phase. So actually, I just threw in O3 Mini as the planner. And let's look at that right now. So you just follow what is laid out in the readme there, and this will spin up in your browser. So this is LangGraph Studio. It's running here. And what's going to happen is I can provide any topic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have O3 Mini take the topic and generate a report plan for me. So I pass in a topic and I'm going to test O3 Mini's ability to generate a coherent report plan based on this topic. Now what's going to do, I'm going to do a web search in this report planning phase. So it's going to pull a bunch of context, use that context and my topic to suggest an interesting report plan. I hit submit. Now O3 Mini is grinding. So it's performing web search, and you can see it's pretty fast now. So previously that was quite slow, but I get a nice report plan actually quite quickly. So these are all the sections of my report, and I can see the name of each section, you can kind of zoom in here. So I can look at, okay, the first section's introduction, overview, core capabilities and architecture, implementations, evaluation, and evolution. Now, if I want to modify any sections of the report, I can just have O3 kind of regenerate all those sections based upon my feedback. So I give it some feedback and I say, I want a section on O1 and a section on O3 specifically. I hit submit. 
to register my feedback. And then what's nice is O3 Mini is going to try again to generate a report plan for me. It's going to incorporate my feedback plus anything it finds on the web related to the topic. So it's churning now. And there we go. We have now a report section on O1 reasoning models, O3 reasoning models. And I was happy with the conclusion. I was happy with the introduction. So it's pretty neat. You can basically give O3 this task of generating a report plan. You can give it feedback. It will gather information from the web to do this planning. And really, once the plan's there, then I shunt off the research and writing. Actually, I use Claude 3.5 Sonnet to do that, which I find to be a very strong writing model. So what's kind of cool about this project is you can mix and match different models to do the planning versus the writing. And so that's what I like about it. I go ahead and say, I accept that report plan. So click that right there. Boom. Submit. And now we'll go and write. So now Claude's going to go and crank out all the, the additional research and writing for each section. It'll do all those in parallel. There it is. I get a final report as markdown, nicely formatted for me with all my sources there. I can just hit this tab, open this up in Langsmith to have a kind of a better look at it. And we can see here's the final report. We get a breakdown of the O1 models with some nice sourcing, O3 models, table, sources, and we get comparison between the two. Quite cool. There we go. I can also look at tracing for the planning itself. So you can see here's O3 Mini that was used for the planning and it only took 10 seconds to generate the report plan, which is quite nice. You can see it generated that plan from a bunch of web resources that it pulled as well as from my feedback. So it takes all this information into account, drains the plan for me quite quickly and especially much faster than I was getting with O1. So this just is a little fun highlight of one good use case for reasoning models where you have kind of a heavy planning step up front that you want to kind of give to a uh, model that has very strong kind of planning reason capacity, let it make the plan and then shunt it off to other models, which might be cheaper, faster, or better at writing for the writing itself. Now, in this case, what's nice is O3 makes the planning actually quite a bit faster. So previously that was a major bottleneck with O1, but of course it's now quite a bit better with O3. So I think it's worth considering reasoning models in use cases as mentioned here and potentially others. And they can be a very nice fit for applications as the, such as these. So hopefully test it. If you haven't done any work with reasoning models, this might be a really good one to consider starting with. And feel free to leave any comments below. Thanks.